gentlemen, welcome to yet another season of Behind the Story. My name is Paul Tusi, and I am so incredibly proud to bring you yet another season of this incredible show. We have an amazing guest today, but before I get to that, uh, we are social distancing for the show now. We are taking the COVID-19 worldwide pandemic very seriously, and we hope that everyone out there is also staying safe and uh, social distancing when they are out in the streets, in the restaurant, um, and wearing their masks, etc. But on the show, we need to speak to each other, so we've separated ourselves. Um, some people are going to be at home uh, doing interviews via Zoom, but our guest today is in a different space so that we respect uh, the COVID-19 protocols when we're working. Without further ado, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome onto the show award-winning hit maker, fill-up star, controversial superstar, living legend in the making. He's going to punish me for what I just said. Um, and any minute now, he's about to be someone else's Superman, and we are so incredibly proud of him. I am talking about none other than Rifilwe, a new age Doc Beleza, Kespa, your best Mufasa in the building. Yeah. How are you, my friend? I'm not happy. Oh, why are you calming yourself down now? You are I'm not high. happy because you said, uh... <laughs> Legend in the making. I'm not in the making anymore. Tell them what you told me when I I'm, called you in the making. I'm a living legend. But when were you in the making? I was I was in the making seven days before the dome. I was still in the making. It was about to happen. Yeah. So when it happened, then I just became a living legend. So why seven just, days before? Is that when you sold out? We sold out. Yeah, we sold, we sold out seven days before. So, so you were a legend even before the actual fill up. I was a live. I was living. I was a living legend in the making before fill up. Okay. You know, I didn't know that I was about to be, you know, a legend. So that from there, it's just sense. been adding on to the legacy, really. Okay, yeah. I see you. So uh, should I be glad that, uh, you know, we're social distancing right now? Because I've heard that you got gas issues. Like, I might have needed some air freshener. What's Who that about? That? <laughs> <laughs> Who told you that? That's funny. That's, that's dope. It's yes, so I've had, I've had a... Uh, I've had a gas issue since high school. How it started was, uh, well, it runs in my family, I guess, but like uh, me and my friends used to fight all the time because we used to disrupt the class. So instead of holding it, we used to fight every single time we felt like we had gas. Mm. And then I guess my body just, you know, started functioning like that. So like I fought all day ever since. So now something that I used to do to be naughty in the class became a problem in real life. So like I'm always fighting. But how do you manufacture a fart? I can't even believe I'm asking this question right I now. I don't think we manufacture. It's just like every time, every time you feel like you have gas, you know, a normal human being would be like, let me go outside or, you know? And we were just Please, like, nah. I need to go outside. Yeah, no. we were just like, right now. I would just. <laughs> Yes. And we start singing the Motuako Ona Unko Tisa Motuako Motuako Ona. Then you know that that Prussia had a bomb that side. And then you wonder why the chicks were not inside for you no, guys. No, I was too then. much. It's like actually, when I was younger, I was I was a fly dude. So like I was too much with the girls. I've never had problems with girls. No, so that's when you were also young and you had boy teeth, but you were broke. But then Boiti came through, she pulled up, and then you said, even me, I have to upgrade myself. What, tell us, tell us. That's, that's uh, yeah, that's the summary. Like, uh, she was a, a childhood, uh, what do they call it, puppy love. Like, and, yeah, and we had, like, these dreams of becoming these superstars. And then, yeah, and then she took off before me. And then I was in the hood, and then, you know, when you're in the hood, like, guys always remind you, how floppy and Tuana So that was, like, part of my motivation in, in the beginning of my career. It was really, uh, you know, it was also, it was depressing, but it was also motivating, and that's that, that part of the story. Mm. That's yeah. a dope story. I remember you telling that story a few years back to me, and I was like, I did not know a woman had that type of power. You know it what I mean? It was crazy. Like, I remember, like, for a good three years, like, that was the first thing on my mind every morning. Like, it was, it was really bad. But in fact, not only me, in general, I think 80% of, like, legends and successful men have a heartbreak story in the beginning. Like, you have some girl who broke your heart or you lost it. Like the Mark Zuckerberg story, actually. I don't know your story, but you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I already know. Like, us legends, we... And it's crazy. Like, you become this 
legend, like this important figure in culture. And your story starts with a heartbreak, you know? Hectic, yeah. hectic. All right, cool. One of my, I mean, I also as a friend sometimes tease you about this, but mm -hmm. it's, in, it's in good spirit. But one of the meanest things that people do to you is always bring up education, yeah. right? Um, and bring up metric or whatever. When, when they have to reach and there's nothing else to use yeah. against you, then they reach for that. I think we know everyone's path is different. External gratification and, and, and external acceptance you know, used to drive me so much and it made me work so hard that uh, it played its part in, in my life. There's so much power in acceptance, like immediately. That's... Like when you, when you take, when you accept things immediately, like, ah, it's like this and you keep rolling, you know, so. What was the biggest lesson, if not something you learned in geography or maths or English class yeah. at Sol Plaiki? What is the biggest lesson you learned from there? Jeez. Other than from the books. There's two, you know, lives. As a student, you, you get to learn what they teach you at school. And then there's like lessons that you learn from just interacting with people. Mm, mm, exactly. You know, uh, one of the first lessons that I learned in being so blacky, because it's such a great school, because there's a balance of rich and poor kids, right? Or, or let me say rich and average kids like this. this I don't like using poor, like, but uh, I had friends who came from fortunate backgrounds where the mom is a MEC and they get driven in all these big cars. And then I also had friends who um, come from the village, right? So because of this great contrast, you learn different lessons from people. So one of the first things that I learned was confidence, because I had to, um, mm, you told the story. Yeah, I have to. I have to function when I'm with my rich friends, even though I don't have as much, or my parents don't have as much as their parents. You punish them with confidence and swag, like. Yes, that's where my swag comes from because we used to go to the parties in in the burbs, and you know they'd pull up with all the parents' cars, and I'm like, yo, I can't pull up. So you know what? I have to come with the baddest outfit or the most interesting outfit. Or might the coolest not be... dance moves. Definitely, you yeah. know what I mean? It might not be uh, as expensive as his, but it just, it's interesting. It strikes more than this. So that's where my style and my swag comes from. And also when I speak to girls, I need to, you know, have like some type of, I don't know what I thought it was then, but I knew I had to, make the girls feel good and funny and, and, and I mean, so that's where the lessons of just interacting with different people comes from. And also when I was interacting with people who had less than me, I also had to be compassionate mm. because, you know, I had to understand that we don't come from the same background and something that I say might come off as insensitive. So, you know, my confidence came from within and more than just material because of the both you know, mm. because of the contrast of both. And then in terms of school, like the things that I learned, I think uh, I picked up poetry at a very young age. Uh, creative writing was one of my favorite uh, classes in grade one, grade, grade art. I don't know why people call it now. But uh, first grade, uh, and then later on, there was something called a poetic license, which also added to my confidence. That taught me that I could do whatever I wanted to do with words, and I could do whatever I wanted to do with art. You know, it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be part of, you know, the rules. So those are the two things that really stand out when I think about it. Are you a student in the School of Life or do you think one day you will go back and study something or finish studying something or because now you've mm. because now you've get, you've spoken as a guest or was it Harvard or Yale or which one was it? So oh. I've spoken at Stanford and I've also given a lecture at, at Gibbs, yeah. at business school. Um, it's been something that I've always said, like throughout my journey, that I didn't drop out of school, I just left the system, right? I'm, and then I got into so the, the university of, the of life, yeah. and I've never stopped learning. That's what I had to explain to my parents, that I'm not dropping out of school to go sit in a corner. I'm just taking a different route, and I'm going to learn more about the things that I need to learn for my journey. Mm. Do Rufilo and Casper ever consult with each other? You know, sometimes mm -hmm. there's this, this Sasha Fierce and Beyonce, as it were, right? Yeah. Is Does that um, complexity exist with you or is it all the same person? Because I also noticed when you credit your, um, when you credit yourself on your albums, you use Rufilo, but Casper's getting all the glory on stage. Am I onto something? Uh-huh. 
You made me realize that. I didn't realize that until you asked me that. Refile is more, it's okay. Like, you know, like, like that's. Slap me, it's fine. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can slap me in the club and I walk away. That's like refile. But like, Casper your vest is like, hell nah. You know, we're going to do something about this. And, and, and sometimes I, I have to kick into that. You know what I mean? So. I have, I want a yes or no answer. Yeah. I feel like Amanda and Boiti dated Casper. Bex is dating her feelway. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, it does. All right. So you've spoken a lot about growing up, you know, with the Bufftown rap crew, if I can call it that, with the OGs there and, you know, hyping yeah. for Jabba. How was the industry to you watching from the sidelines and hustling to get in? And how has that affected the way you look at it today? Uh, the industry looks beautiful from outside. It looks like all the glory, glitter, it's like, man, if I could just get in there. And that's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to belong and just get in there, right? But once you get in, you start seeing that, man, it's war. <laughs> and it's wild. It, it's wild. It's war. is the wild, wild west. <laughs> and only the strong survive. And that's why, you know, if, if you... You know, my fans know, like, my second album, I was like, whew, I was in a, a, I wouldn't say a dark space, but I was, I was fighting. Because I wasn't gonna let these people treat me like I, like I ain't do nothing, you know what I mean? So, like, and then I had to learn how to be a bully, because I wasn't gonna get bullied. You know, I wasn't gonna watch these people bully me. So, I wish I knew that talent is not enough to survive in this game. You could be the most talented, you could have the most credentials, mm. you could have the most numbers. Mm. All that doesn't matter if you're not gonna be firm mm. and strong and, and you're not gonna be able to, to push back and go against the grain, you know what I mean? It's not gonna matter. Like, the industry is, is, is really a, a lonely place where you have to fight for yourself or people will take your position. Because you need to understand that while you're sleeping, somebody's thinking about how they're gonna take your place. So if you really wanna be number one, you need to know that at one point you're gonna have to be the bully. When you look back then at your documented come up, you, you have a very well documented come up, the ups and downs, the you know the controversy, the controversy of it all as well. And when you think of that and how hard you suffered sleeping on people's couches and, and stuff like that, uh -huh. um, and coming here with next to nothing basically to come and chase your dream, yeah. then you then you read open up the industry on Twitter, like yeah, like what comes to mind when you look at those two things together? Nobody put me on. I was helped. It's guys like Double HP that helped me when nobody wanted to help me. He took a chance on me. He gave me a little bit. He said, he has tried this. Mm -hmm. You know, he spoke, he spoke positively about me to someone when I wasn't there, mm -hmm. you know? And he put me next to him, which made people think, hmm, maybe I need to give this guy a listen a little bit. You know what I mean? He helped me, but he didn't put me on. He didn't say, I'm getting out so that you can get in. And, um, but when we were coming up, things were different. The instant gratification of social media wasn't as prominent as it is right now. When I was coming up, like viral didn't exist. Viral really meant people know you for real in the streets. Like people know your song for real. That was viral. Like everyone is talking about this song. Not we can work the algorithms and put some money in social media and hire Twitter promo teams and you know what I mean? So that's the, the life we live in right now. So the attitude of open up the industry is different with different industries. There's acting, there's, there's stuff that I can't speak on, you know? With me, with music, like literally, 
I cannot wake up and say, guys, stop listening to me. Listen to Kuzwayo, he's the best. People listen to whoever they want to listen to. And if your music is good enough, it'll get you there. Mm -hmm. The only thing that needs to happen, in my opinion, is the radio needs to start doing something to uplift, firstly, South African music. And, 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 and prioritizing South African music the right way and have certain catalogs and certain calibers of artists. You, in America, Drake doesn't get played like some other dude that we don't know. It's Drake. When Drake sends the song to the radio stations, he needs to get prominent, uh, he needs to get preference because it's Drake, that's how it works. He worked to get there, right? But because we don't have enough space for South African music, then the smallest of small don't have any space because there's so much American music playing on radio stations. But SABC so tried to fix that and then it was the same community that fought back against that. Because we don't have the right tastemakers. We have, firstly, the right understanding of the industry and the end goal. A lot of people think that when Casper Your Vest is 10 times richer, it's a failure for them, but nah. If the industry is 10 times richer, you also 10 times richer because everybody's going to benefit in the long run. If South Africans can celebrate and push their own, as a whole, from radio compiler, TV compiler, artists, all of us say South Africa, South Africa, South Africa. Just like we get scolded when we wear Gucci. Could you know, we South African bands, brands. We must all do that for every single thing and we'll get somewhere because first of all, we have enough talent. First of uh, second of all, we have the brains. Thirdly, we have the best infrastructure in Africa. Um. So, you know, you've spoken a lot. Oh, I mean, unless you want to get into it, but you've spoken a lot about your life with Jabba, um, WHP, mm -hmm. um, his passing, how it's affected you. At the time of recording this, you recently posted as well, um, you visiting his resting places. Mm -hmm. And it's not the first time you lost someone. You also lost your brother when you were 14 years old. You said you wish you could have told him you love him. Yeah. So, I mean, if we believe what we believe, he can still hear that. Do you ever address that? How, tell him you love him. I've never thought of that, like telling him I love him now, but um, I'm sure he's proud. You know, if, if he can see this, I'm sure he's proud of everything that I've done. Not only the success of like what people see, but I carry my family. That's what people don't know. My mom doesn't work, my dad doesn't work, my sister's a freelancer, my, my, my younger sister is also studying and she's doing her thing, like she loves money. Uh, <laughs> I wonder and, where she gets it from. <laughs> and all these people know that they have someone that they can call when it's bad, and I'm that dude. And I know that my brother, wherever he is, he's looking at me and saying, and you never yeah. know, he's probably protecting you, watching over you. Definitely. You know? My grandfather as well, Jabba as well. I know that Jabba's looking at me and he's proud because he knows that, you know, the right dude is shining. The dude is gonna shine a light on everybody. I got a record on my album, Nuku Remix, that has me, Kuli, Momulimi, Double HP, uh, Dukes. That was never gonna happen if I did not put it together. And I'm doing this at the height of my success. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna do it when we're all in the same place. I say, these are the guys that inspired me. And while I'm still number one, let's shine a light on them. There you go. Um, on that very high note, we're going to go to an ad break. I'm gonna try and make sure he doesn't make me say stuff that you guys should hear when we're on camera. But yeah, this is Behind the Story, the social distancing edition. And we'll see you right after this with Kespa and your best. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome back to Behind the Story, the social distancing edition. We have none other than your favorite superstar, Casper in your vest. Okay, so the rap game, Nim, um, and your career has a notable amount of what's considered beef with the, you know, with the likes of AKA Ricky, Aries, MT, and some OGs in the past, which included your heroes, you know, and you've spoken to Slicker a lot about how you grew from that and how you even sound like them when you were younger and, yeah. you know, how that revelation was interesting for you. Why? do you think that needs to happen? Is it is it ego when you're younger or ego when you're older? Like, what creates that dynamic? And does rap need it? Sports needs uh, egos. <sighs> you know, rap is a sport. So everyone wants to be number one. And I don't think anybody will be happy with not being number one. At some point, someone is going to come at you if you're at the top, you know? and. It's very exciting for fans. Like, like that's the fact. Like, without, oh man, I hate this guy's name. Without AKA guy, okay. and Casper, South African hip hop wouldn't be where it is. It was so interesting, Joe. When this thing happened, this was like two titans. This is, you know, Keza Chiefs and, and Orlando Pirates. This is Ronaldo and Messi. It just, it had to happen. It's just that with rap, it was direct. It's not like as friendly as football. With rap, it's like, I'm better than you. Um, so just back to the discussion of OG and, and, and well, OGs and, and being young in the game and yeah. that dynamic. So for you, have you changed your strategy or do you understand now that a young rapper has to have a certain mindset and he can only change that mindset with experience as he grows? Or yes. do you think if you thought like this back then, you'd be where you are now? I understand it fully. I understand both sides as I've been there. And I understand what the OGs were trying to show me when I was a kid, you know? They were speaking from experience. And as much as they had facts that they were trying to teach me, I listened to what I listened to and I left what I, what I didn't want to listen to and it's, it created Casper New Vest because my OGs told me I couldn't do the dome. But it's not because they didn't want me to do the dome, it's because they didn't want to see me fail. But I didn't listen to it. You know what I mean? Because that was not for me. But when Jabba taught me the importance of humility and slapped me a little, you know, a few times when I got out of line and said, Joe, you don't do that. I learned from that. And it's one of the reasons why I'm still here today. Mm -hmm. Because without Jabba calling me when I was dissing Fat Joe on Twitter and say, yo, you out of line. This is not how we go about it. And I was like, no, Khutman, I'm joking. He's like, whether you're joking or not, this is someone that you need to respect. He's your elder and you're out of line. This is something I started, you know, learning about. And you don't see Casper just going off and being disrespectful to all the people because of that. So I understand both. So I also understand that one day, you know, I'm gonna wake up to disrespect from a nasty C. One day I'm gonna wake up with disrespect from like an MT. And I'm like, I, I know, I understand where you are. I understand the position you are in, you know what I mean? You, 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 I understand the mentality and it's not gonna offend me as much as it would have if I did not understand the mentality and the position. Um, so we've mentioned the other beefs, the, the names you don't even want to mention, but there's yeah. people you've been wanting to collaborate with and you've mentioned MT, there's also a Reese. So, I mean, I'm thinking, I don't know if Jabba ever did this for you, yeah. but I'm thinking you could start practicing the thing of being a dad and humbling yourself to teach a lesson to someone. I, I tried. You tried to reach out to Aries? I, I tried, like, I, I Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Did you say I I, <laughs> I try to reach out, like, with people that had, I to reach out on social media, like, hit me up. I tried people who know him, and it didn't work. And if they don't want to work with you, they don't want to work with you, for whatever yeah. reason. So for me, even with MT, we were supposed to go to the studio, he switched off his phone. But I'm, I'm feeling like, yo, this guy's phone's off. Like, I was so excited to be in the studio with them. And I'm like, you know, he mized me. And not only them, like, there's a lot of people who mized me. I know that I genuinely tried, and I tried to work with so many people, and I'm glad I reached out to everyone I wanted to work with, because that's how I met something so into, because I always wanted to work with him. <laughs> I feel 
like that guy's my music soulmate. Like, Excellent. I feel like it just, I was like, yeah. And we're so different. We worked on three songs, two made the album. I've got another song that I, put, I didn't put on the album because the song is so big, it would disturb everything. I said, no, I'm not ready for such a song. Let me relax. Um, now, just quickly going back to people who are, I don't know if we would call Ricky an OG, but he's definitely been in the game, right? Uh-huh. Um, I think Amu's an OG, do you know what I mean? You guys are young OGs. Um, yeah. Apparently, this, this, I don't know if I, because there wasn't really a squabble, not in my um, knowledge, but uh. the story goes in the streets that you weren't there when he needed you. Mm -hmm. Is that true? No, in fact, he helped me when I needed something. So I still don't know what happened. So you also just allowed your friendship to end without trying to... You know what, Pearl? You need to start listening to me. I said I'm cool with everything. People think I'm joking. I'm cool with everything. If someone that I love wakes up tomorrow and says, I don't want to be with you anymore, it's all right. You want to vibe? Vibe. You want to sweat me? Sweat me. You want to love me? I love you too. Let's do this thing. You want to hate me? Hate me? It's you whatever. Know, I miss the combo. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was, I miss, you guys made good I miss, I miss the combo of Jay-Z and Dame Dash as a fan. But... But it's, it's not it easy. is what it is. Jay is a billionaire and Dame is doing his thing. It's, it's, it is what it is. If tomorrow it happens that me and Ricky become the best step rules again. The beef with Mr. Kong. You know, let me tell you something, the funny thing. When I hear that word, right, in my brain, this is what happens. I hear <laughs> the beep, 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 beep. Like, I've heard that word so many times. But is there anything you think you could have done differently or wish you could have done differently to avoid? Hell no. Nah. I love that the story went like that. Hectic. Because I that's how I became the no, king wow. of this. Like, I became Casper because of that situation. Because okay. I played my cards right when it happened. You know what I mean? So. I haven't even thought of the things I could have done right or wrong. I was in the moment, I was present, and I behaved and acted the way I felt like it. And and then this happened, you know what I mean? Maybe I wouldn't have had that energy to push so much. I get it, you're always a superstar. You know, Casper never takes off his shades. Once you even made a joke in the club, you're like, I even shout them on. Obviously, that has to be a joke. And even right now, let the let the people see your eyes. I'm gonna let try to take. I'm gonna try to take my shit. Would you Would you have slapped back if it wasn't gonna affect you? Said I should take there you go. Bona, yeah. Yeah. Of Yo. course, come on. <laughs> huh? the, the you know the the prettiest motherfucker on the earth, you know, best looking rapper in the country. Just to give you an idea, I, I managed to get one really special person um, to send me something dope for you. Yeah. So I'm gonna obviously just text it today. I mean, text it right now. Um, and then you need to play it and tell me what you think of this. Play it? What, is it a voice note? Yeah, play should I play it? Is it safe? Yeah. Hi, Fifi, Chief, your dad, yeah. Camilla, I would like to congratulate you for the album, the coming album. I've had a few songs which are super. And I would also like to congratulate you for the coming Baby boy, bouncing baby boy. <laughs> and uh, I would also like to say hi to Tobeka and, con and, and congratulate you guys. And please take care of my uh, baby boy. I'm impatiently waiting to be a granddad. God bless. Take care. I'm even tearing Oh my God, that's amazing. How does that feel, man? Oh my, I like, oh man. You know, like, it's a passing on of the bad news. You're about to be the Superman now. Oh man, that's amazing. Oh man, oh man. Are you good, are you good? Like, my father is like the most amazing human being you'll ever meet, like, Facts. Like, I'm not saying this because it's my dad. The most amazing human, the most forgiving, the most 
reasonable, the most loving, the most cheerful human you'll ever meet is my father. Like, hearing my dad, like, talk about his baby boy, like, and that's my son. And I, I, I was listening to that voice note waiting for him to say granddad. Like, I was like, yo, I wish if he could say, like, granddad. Like, and he said it, like, yo, man, my dad, bro, like, Superman. I think I'm, I'm, I might change the skit on my album and make it this voice note if, if I have time. Because uh. I've got another skit on my album um, that uh, that's me when I found out that I was about to be a father. I'm um, just dying to ask about those things. Yes, yeah, so I was like shooting a video and I'm drunk as hell in Cape Town and I'm drunk and I'm like, shooting this video telling uh, my woman, like, I'm so happy. She may be the happiest man in the world. And the funny thing is, like, I'm drunk, so I'm like, I'm such a young father. Like, I'm turning up, like, I'm from the club. I'm going to sleep, and I'm, like, in the toilet. All my friends don't know that I just found out that I'm going to be a dad. So I'm like, girl, so girl, girl, so girl. And I'm just, like, in this video. And it's, so, do you have the video? Show it to us. Yeah, I do. This is... Um, so drunk. And um, I just wanted to let you know, man. Yo, yo, yo. You made me the happiest, most excited man alive in 2020. Um, I've got so much going through my mind, like... I mean, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, what do I say after that amazing story, guys? So, we're going to be talking more about Simba, fatherhood, and of course, hashtag any minute now the album. And um, I want to just break all of that down right after this. So, please don't go anywhere. We've got something still very special coming up right after this. The last slice of Behind the Story with your favorite rapper, Caspanyol Best Mufasa. That's my favorite part of the movie. One of my favorite parts of this movie. The Mufasa. Simba the Lion King. I'm going to backtrack to a little bit like your previous love life. Boise's rap career flourished. Are you surprised or not? I am. Because rap music is not it's easy. So I know that we had this conversation when it happened, and I said, yo. It's great to be excited about the first song, but how long can you go? That's the rap music career. So um, she's done well for herself, and I'm very surprised. And yeah. So you confirmed that you're about to be a dad via yeah. the album sleeve, and that was like super exciting for everyone. You've always named your albums after, you know, you've named it after yourself, your sister, um, your two sisters, yes? Mm -hmm. Right? And you've said your very last album will be after your late brother. Mm -hmm. um, and then you went sweet and short, and now you've said any minute now. Adele has done numbers only. Beyonce had that stage as well. Mm. Why did you not carry on with that trajectory? I know your friends never had a chance, but... Yeah, sweet and short, it was just that. It was an experimental album when I was having fun, and I was like, yeah, let me just do this project, keep it moving. Mm. You know, I had no expectations whatsoever. It was fun. Any minute now, uh, I would have named it after my son, but I hadn't named him yet when I, I was putting out the album. And so I was like, let me just play on the fact that it could happen any minute now. And then later on, I was going to change it to his name, but 
then I think I had to think about the protecting the energy thing. Okay. To do I want to put my son's name out like that before he's born and he's healthy, or do I want to protect him? Okay. Um, before I really delve into the topic of uh, you being a father, I want to talk about what I consider one of your first children, which is Philip. Yep. Ne? Your, could be even your first son in, in a weird way. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's, there was a lot of controversy with Philip, um, with its success as well, and the success is very well documented. Um, but people spoke about how the Moses Mapita Stadium uh, leg didn't go as well as planned, and you know, you're still trying to get money from some of the mm. uh, ventures that you did. Um, and then people started saying it was because of Utira. Like, can you confirm that? if that's untrue or... I could only confirm it if it was a document. Okay. If I had an email where this person said this, or, you know, then I could confirm it. I also heard stories. All I know that, all I know is that there was a lot of foul play and I wasn't treated well. Mm. And the, 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 the people who are involved know the truth, you know? But I'm not gonna accuse anybody of anything on television. Mm. All I know is that I wasn't treated well. I wasn't accepted well mm. by people I thought, you know, were my friends or people that I thought wanted me to do well. So it was like, damn, all right. But at the same time, it was one of the most beautiful moments because I'm able to walk out of uh, Mabida knowing that the people love me. Mabida, like, was a bad experience for me and my, my team. Like, people did foul stuff to us. They pulled the plugs on us to make sure that this thing does not happen. They know themselves, so I don't need to mention names, right? But they know in their hearts that they can't believe it happened without them. They can't believe it happened without their money. They can't believe that it actually happened when they tried everything to sabotage us. And it happened because I'm a son of God. And guess what? The next day I was a global citizen, shutting Beyonce and Jay-Z down. And they looking from KZN like, whoa, this dude did this. His stadium, he's, they were still crazy. packing my stage there. When I was performing, I was smashing it. They were still packing my stage and my beat and it was done. And I did it in their backyard. And even though they didn't want me to do it, we did it. And I can tell you now, I'm one of the most loved artists in KZN. Like, they love me out there, and I love them too. At the, as much as you filled up, people call you and they say, oh man, you, you call yourself, you always make yourself the victim, et cetera, et cetera, saying, ah, if you guys supported me, like Rihanna, one, two, three, but you filled up stadiums. Like, can you help, uh, can you balance us on those two thoughts and how they connect? You know, I always say us, and then they say me. They never oh, get it. Okay. I always say support South African music. They say, but we support you, we go to the stadium. I'm saying, I'm not talking about me. I'm blessed. But everybody should get a chance. Every South African artist must get a chance to fill up FNB Stadium. That's how it must be. Um, you said you're going to take Phil up to Botswana. What happened to that plan? It's going to happen. All right, cool. Yeah, definitely. Botswana is... I kept, I said, I know I said KZN is my second home, but Botswana is my second home. So, KZN within South Africa. And then, <laughs> second home in terms of a country, Botswana started booking me before South Africa took me serious. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's dope. That's I used dope. to get on a taxi to go perform at a festival, and I'm the highlight, but I'm on a taxi. When you still had the ponytail, you still. You know, it took me forever to like that ponytail, and then you took it off as soon as I thought it was dope. You still punished me with that. Ish, and sorry. I heard you kept it. Maybe one day it will be worth that more That ponytail than you was think. a kunkra because when I was in the toilet, you used to go between <laughs> my bums. So, like, I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Okay, I know, I hear you. Um, so, you are obviously a very respected and very successful rapper. Yep. businessman, record label owner, you have a clothing brand, yep. and um, I recently discovered you have a construction company. Yep. Uh, what else, what, what is the one thing you still wish you could do or you're planning to do? I'm going into property. My uh, mentor is a property mogul by the name of Keith Botongo. I was actually just talking to him on the phone right mm -hmm. now. And that's my next business venture. Like, I'm trying to collect 
a big bag and then throw it in there. That's, that's what I'm doing right now. I need you to check your phone again. Is it? Yibu. This is very tricky, because you... No, you need to trust me. Uh... Hi, Fifi. My mom. I want to take this moment to congratulate you. Any minute from now, you'll be a father. I'm excited. And I can feel it in my spirit that Simba will bring lots of happiness, peace and sanity mm. in both families. I also want to congratulate you, Tobeka, for making me a proud Gogo. And I want to believe that the one million is already in the account. You promise that you are only going to be a father when your child. Oh, yeah. You actually uh, saved one million. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you delayed the process of me being a gogo, saying, Well, now nah, you don't have a womb. But I want to thank Tobeka for allowing God, as the architect of conception, to use her. Yeah, I was very, 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 very excited. Yeah, thank mom. you, thank you, thank you. Any minute now, Tlaja Nung yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They call me the greatest. I drop the top to the post and I stick out my head and scream, Mama, Mama, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to make you proud. I know I put you through a lot of this shit. I'm sorry the calling was loud, but you, you let me drop out of school. All of your friends used to call you a fool. Now when I go home, I pull up in the coop and ask all my lawyer cousins what it do, what it do. You like my mom that? is my twin, yeah. And I did say I ain't gonna have a kid until, wow, I forgot that. Yeah, two, a two, an interview two years ago, you said, no, af. I said, well, I actually, you said, N never for a kid. I yeah, mean, I said ready. to my mom that I wouldn't have a kid when I was young. I said I wouldn't have a kid until I have a million rand saved. So it, she remembers that. And then now, and now, yeah, like, and then the Anneli the interview. And now, like, a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so watch. <laughs> OK, one more. Yeah. I'm That's gonna, dope. So this, uh, you're gonna need to take your your glasses off. I know you're a superstar. Yeah. Um, All right. Okay. Please read that for us. That entire paragraph. What? That I just sent you. You sent me something else. Yeah. Oh, a letter to my dad. Wow, this is long. Just read it. That basically is from your son, quote unquote. I think penned by the person who's carrying your son. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm even scared to read. I, I, I'm stuck at Papa. Read it. Uh, whew, whew, this is personal. Should I be sharing this? No, but um, that's what the purpose of it was for. Um, a letter to my dad. Papa, it's so hard to speak to, to speak of someone I've not physically met but have emotionally connected with. Of the silent prayers of gratitude, Mama breaks into, I'm filled with an unshakable feeling of being blessed. I shouldn't take it for granted that you've been a true example of a responsible, loving, supportive, and present young black father. Not only were you given the title, but you showed up and showed off. You spoke me into the universe, celebrated my creation, and have not left my side since. I've heard your enthusiasm in every doctor's appointment, your mature take in conversations about family, and your big, bright future plans for me. I've had countless conversations with God about you, and it brings little tingles to my just formed toes as how mm, highly favored you are. I can envision your power and how everyone is so moved when you when your name fills their mouths through conversations or songs. Oh, I've heard you quite a big story. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you quite a big story out there in tales and in real life. I've overheard all the history you've made and the legacy you've created. I can't even imagine what the world has out there for me, but one thing I'm certain of is I will follow your lead. Oh my God, this is so special. Some say it's your smile or your style. You supposedly know how to light up the room, and I just want to be just like you. Oh my God. May my presence push you even harder to open up more new doors and show you the world is limitless. 
continue paving the way for other kids and remain the king you are. Oh my God, I can't wait to proudly tell people that's my dad. See you soon, Papa. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so stressed right now. Actually, it's so beautiful. Are you okay? <laughs> and that's what the shades are for, to hide their emotions. Wow, this is amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's behind the story. <laughs> Great work, Pearl. Thank you. Babe. This was amazing. Angla lang as pleasure. But thank you so much for joining us on our first exclusive, amazing episode. Um, we love you guys, and we definitely hope to see you again next week to tune in for another episode of Behind the Story. I love you so much. Where Pearl tells us about her love life. Stay. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Stay blessed. Why are we so? <laughs> I had to. Peace. <laughs>